Hunter Biden, the smartest man that Joe Biden has ever known, is in uh, hot water. We've known this for a long time. He has been facing a number of different investigations stemming from his activity with a number of business partners in China, involving China, and a number of other different uh, areas around the world that have raised some eyebrows. And now we're learning that a U.S. prosecutor issued a grand jury subpoena for Hunter Biden and his bank records connected to China. Here is the article from the Epoch Times written by Zachary Stieber, published on January 31st. This is an interesting one. We're going to see where this document came from. But of course, it involves Hunter Biden, a U.S. attorney issued grand jury subpoena for the bank record of President Joe Biden's son, Hunter, and his brother, in 2019. And remember, right, this is Donald Trump. He's still in power. And we've got the Department of Justice being run by Bill Barr. And uh, Joe Biden's just announcing he's running. And so there's a subpoena that goes out for bank records. And this is now being made public for the first time recently. David Weiss, U.S. Attorney for the District of Delaware, passed the subpoena onto the J.P. Morgan Chase Bank they wanted bank records from Hunter Biden, James Biden, and two other people we're going to talk about. What were they looking for? Records between Chase Bank and the Bank of China. You can see it down here, the logo. And so the question, they're, they're, going, they're saying, hey, we're going to Chase Bank. We think that Hunter was transacting with the Bank of China. We think that James was transacting with the Bank of China. And the U.S. government wants to see what this was. What's going on here? And this is all taking place in 2019. And where did these documents come from? Well, 2019, back in May, they were obtained by this organization called Marco Polo. This is a nonprofit started by this fella, Garrett Ziegler. He then was the White House's Office of Trade and Manufacturing Policy during the Trump administration. And so he goes and gets these documents. Ziegler tells the Epoch Times in an email that a whistleblower who was a party to the subpoena provided the documents. Okay, so his nonprofit didn't go file a FOIA request. A whistleblower provided those documents to the press. The press made it public. Here it is. And he writes, this wide-ranging grand jury subpoena confirms that Joe's son and brother received transfers from an account with the Bank of China. Let's take a look at it. Here it is. You can see it is watermarked to death by Marco Polo, the organization that that gentleman runs. So make sure you uh, don't forget that. U.S. Department of Justice from the District of Delaware. That is being run by this guy who we're going to learn uh, about shortly. But that's what he looks like. We see J.P. Morgan Chase, attention subpoena processing. His organization, Mr. Weiss, sends this subpoena over to this to Chase. Grand jury subpoena, May 15th, 2019. We see at that time, 2019, Bill Barr, he's in charge. And so we're going to learn more about all this. Here is the guy who's running the Delaware office. February 2022, 2018 is when he assumed office. He's been around for a long time, right? He was acting and he was in office all the way back in 2009. It sounds like he may have been originally appointed by Barack Obama. And so a lot of these U.S. attorneys, you know, they're basically lifers. They kind of just stay there and they you know, will transition between presidents and the president may come and swap out some, you know, some of them. But uh, typically, you know, there will be attorneys who sort of are career U.S. attorneys. And so that's who this guy is. Now, he is writing this. This is David C. Weiss. Leslie Wolf was the actual assistant U.S. attorney who uh, actually signed on this, but we didn't, uh, I couldn't find anything about her in particular. So we're talking about David Weiss says, attached is a subpoena issued by a federal grand jury requiring the production of certain items. So it's saying Chase Bank, we need documents from you. Uh, the right to financial privacy provides you should be aware of all this other stuff, but you still got to work with us. The return date on the subpoena Tuesday, June 25th, so about over a month, However, please respond sooner. I also need you to complete this authenticity document to make sure that we can confirm that these business records are in fact authentic, right? Because you can't just send over a bunch of, a bunch of uh, Excel spreadsheet files and just sort of, uh, you know, fold them into a paper airplane and throw them at the judge. We got to make sure they're real business records and they got to haul somebody in from the company to say, I recognize those. Yes, I created those in the ordinary course of business. This is how we did it. This is how I know they're reliable, blah, blah, blah. But says, I, I would, reg you, know, you may also substitute this with one that your company regularly uses. And if you have any questions about any of this stuff, here's who to contact. Give me an email. 
So we can see as this dives in, we get a tracking number from the U.S. Department of Justice, deliver the records over to Leslie Wolf. She's a U.S. prosecutor, the financial institution, J.P. Morgan Chase. No real remarks. Uh, do not proceed with compliance if the cost is going to exceed $100. Cheapskates at the government. If it's more than $100, bucks, do not do it. Okay, we want it, but if it's over $100, let me know. And so uh, you're going to see there's sort of an invoice form that is there. Date the order prepared, May 15th. We've already seen that along with the tracking number. Going over to Leslie Wolf, date of the request, 2019. All right. Here is the invoice, and so you can see, uh, you know, the U.S. government, they'll come out of pocket, they'll pay 100 bucks. so searching and processing costs, like, you know, i got to go find all these records for Hunter and James and everybody else, it's going to be a lot. And so, you know, they're going to send a bill, and so if the government, if it's over 100 bucks, government doesn't want it. All right, so that's all that's on there, and then we see this is the subpoena now, and we're going to get a hard date on this, subpoena to testify before grand jury. Now, you'll notice... That in lieu of personal appearance, you don't actually have to show up. So the, the judge is writing this here. You've got to be here, right, on June 25th, 2019. But if you submit these documents electronically, follow the instructions in attachment A, then you're not going to need to show up. Where do you need to show up? The Caleb Boggs, uh, J. Caleb Boggs Federal Building out there in Wilmington, Delaware, which is where all this is taking place. You are commanded, it says, to appear, and you must bring all this stuff at the date, time, location, all standard language. But really what they want are the documents. So the signature of the clerk signs off on this. All this gets delivered. Now we get to the good stuff. What are they looking for? And here you can see, again, produce all of the following. Who? J.P. Morgan Chase. We can see here all records and documents, all financial banking transactions within the following known names and accounts. However, when conducting your search, Please do not limit your scope to only the known accounts listed below. Unknown associated signatory or closed accounts are also requested. So give us everything. If it's Hunter Biden, if it's, you know, H Biden, if it's, you know, Harold Biden, uh, who goes by Hunter, whatever, alias, whatever, find it all. We want it all. And they're looking for people with these names. Number one, Hunter Biden. You can see that here. The names are... It, listed down here. We've got James Biden, who's over here. Devin Archer is coming on this side. And then we have Erwin Sherwin, who is joining us over here. And so we've got the four individuals who are all listed on this document that are going to be uh, you know, have their records subpoenaed. And we've got all these businesses too. And we remember some of these. We've talked about a lot of these. Uh, S Rosemont Seneca, Burisma Holding. We've got Sen Seneca Global Advisors. They kind of reuse that name. But there's many others, right? RSP Holdings, RSP Investments, Alpha, Bravo. They're just making all these shell companies. RSTP2 Alpha, RSTP2 Bravo, RSP Holdings, RSP Investments, right? Who, who, what, what are those, right? Who knows? So they're just creating a number of different organizations and funneling money around. And so the banks having to go and do searches and disclose all this stuff, and they want it all. Now, they're also talking about, you know, instructing beneficiaries, uh, Society for the Worldwide Bank Telecommunication, you know, SWIFT, right? So uh, here's how to give us those records. And this is really what they want. They want electronic copies of the, the documents and they say send all of that over to the IRS if you actually they, they, they don't say that they say if you have problems let the IRS know about and they'll answer questions for you about the exact scope of the documents or what what you need otherwise get all that stuff send it to me Leslie and don't you tell anybody about this do not disclose the existence of this subpoena to anybody out there and use this in your subject line. Okay, I've got a lot of cases. Reference that tracking code in your response. Here is the certificate of authenticity for the business records. Okay, this is, you know, I am John Doe and I'm employed here. My official title is custodian of records. I've appointed the record keeper. This is what I do. I monitor accounts and I obtain these records by using this software, blah, blah, blah. Signed by John Smith, John Doe. And he is now somebody who can come in and testify that these are real and legitimate, accurate documents. The, art, the article wraps up, says, shortly after Hunter Biden announced he was being probed, the office said it could not comment on an ongoing investigation. So they shut up about it. New documents show that the investigation, which was shielded from the public, was likely going on in 2019. So many people are asking about this. The question, Ziegler says, is why did Bill Barr... Uh, directly intervene to ensure the U.S. attorney in Delaware 
and uh, in this case, and stop this from coming out and becoming public for over 17 months until the election. It sounds like Bill Barr actually stepped in and tried to shut this up. David Weiss and Bill Barr, or someone with a conscience inside the Justice Department, should answer that question for the American people. Was there a cover-up? They try to hide this subpoena? Barr was asked about this, said, oh, it's just public policy, right? We, we, we don't publicly confirm probes that involve candidates for office. Right? Oh, it's just a policy we just have. Yeah, and so Weiss, a Trump nominee, was one of a few U.S. attorneys not removed by Biden after taking office. Barr was attorney general for part of the time. And a lawyer representing Hunter, representing the White House, Jen Psaki, nobody's getting asked about it. A query was sent to Sherwin's company wasn't returned. U.S. Attorney's Office didn't respond. Chase didn't dispute the authenticity of the documents, but they declined to comment. Little is known about this, but apparently, yeah, Biden, Hunter, and others have a lot of dealings with China and many other interesting parts throughout the world, making a lot of money. You know, Hunter Biden had a pretty good gig for somebody who didn't know, as far as I can tell, almost anything about uh, mostly anything, was getting paid something like $55,000, $80,000 a month for knowledge about nothing. Good gig if you can get it. Helps if your dad is president or vice president, which his is. And so he's going to continue this grift. The question is going to be whether or not we're going to learn any more about it or if he's going to continue to be able to sell his paintings that he does in his studio. We'll see. We'll continue to follow it along. I hope you join us in the journey. Follow along with us. Let me know what you think about this video and the others down in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe. We have a live show we do every weekday, and I would love it if you joined us on that. So hit subscribe. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.